Hey Jeff with Master Medics here. Thank you so much for checking out our pharmacology videos. Today we're talking about nitroglycerin, its mechanism of action and its profile. If you love our videos and you want to see more of them, please hit that, hit that subscribe button. We would love to see you back on this channel and learning more from us. So let's get to it. So nitroglycerin may sound like a fairly simple medication, but it's still important to understand the mechanism of understanding. Because we know, yeah, it dilates blood vessels. Okay, well why? How? What's it going to do? So let's talk about this mechanism. So when you introduce nitroglycerin into the body, it actually will be, con it converts a couple times. The mitochondria actually have a role in its conversion, but it's going to convert into something called nitric oxide. Okay, nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is a natural occurring uh, oxide that actually was in with that's within the smooth muscles themselves. The higher concentration of nitric oxide, the more vasodilation that occurs, and the decrease in nitric oxide, the more constriction constriction occurs, and so on and so forth. So uh, that's essentially what nitroglycerin is doing: is just converting into nitric oxide in order to stimulate or promote vasodilation, particularly of the ve the venous side, not so much the arterial side but some so that is essentially what nitroglycerin is going to do as a mechanism it also causes coronary vessel dilation as well which is going to be a a good thing if we are in a myocardial infarction situation which is really what nitro is going to be used for in those particular situations and so that is its quick little down and dirty mechanism of action of nitro Okay, so as far as its class, it's an ant considered an antianginal or a smooth muscle uh, relaxer or vasodilator. Is essentially what it is. Its indications almost exclusively possible ischemic. Uh, ischemia due to um, ACS or acute, acute coronary syndrome. Uh, also pulmonary edema, CHF can be used in there. Again, all due to an acute coronary syndrome problem. Uh, pulmonary edema just due to its, de its vasodilation properties can help a pulmonary edema patient that, uh, that could be drowning in their own fluids simply because of a serious CHF or an acute myocardial infarction that's causing pulmonary edema. So lots of, a couple things there for nitro's indications. Big contraindications to watch out for. Uh, hypotension is going to be one of your bigger ones. Again, as a mechanism, it causes vasodilation. If we have a hypotensive patient and we actually create more vasodilation, we can have a pretty detrimental situation on our hands causing pretty severe decreases and we could cause major problems. And we'll talk about why nitroglycerin can be very dangerous in inferior myocardial infarctions in a later video after this one as well. We'll tag it into the end of it so you can check it out. So that is the one big contraindication you gotta watch out for. Uh, increased ICP or intracranial hemorrhage. Again, this is gonna be used for your your ACS and your CHF patients very rarely going to be used for in your ICP patients I can explain why it's going to happen but it won't be really important for you in this particular video uh, severe bradyarrhythmia or tachycardias the big things that, that we're concerned about here is that we want to make sure that we're using nitroglycerin in a safe way in a in a a rate and a heart rate that's actually going to be beneficial to them and so that's why we want to watch out for any bradycardias or tachycardias of you know heart rates above 150 or a uh, bradycardia is below 50 just kind of watching out for those things because um in an inferior infarct we can see pretty severe bradys we can also see type 2 and type 3 av blocks and if we give a patient nitro in those types of situations it can be very very dangerous. Uh, one last contraindication, probably the most famous one, is uh, erectile dysfunction medications like Viagra, Cialis, Levitin, uh, within 36 hours or 24 for Viagra. Now there's two different types of doses. We have the first, the sublingual or the tab that we uh, do sublingually. That is a 0.4 milligram tab or spray, and that is every five minutes, uh, as long as there's no other contraindications. And then the second option is the infusion, which is becoming more of the norm these days because it's so easier, so much easier to control, so much easier to titrate, and you're not nearly as at risk for these uh, this hypotension that can occur for with nitroglycerin. 
So you can start them as low as five micrograms per minute. You can titrate up to, I've seen protocols up to 300 micrograms per minute in order to limit, um, in order to dilate vessels, in order to decrease pressures and so on and so forth. So we can see pretty substantial amounts in those infusions. But the beautiful thing about them is the ability to titrate up to wherever that patient can manage. And that is really the goal is to find out where we can get rid of that pain, maybe add a little bit of a, a fentanyl on top of that. But the key here is that infusion is really the go-to if you have the ability to use it. Okay, side effects, obviously there's quite a few here. Headaches is probably the most prominent one that you're going to see. Hypotension is a pretty dangerous one that we gotta watch out for and be aware of that. Uh, we can see tachycardia, especially if we cause a, say a decrease in hypotension, we cause hypoperfusion, then we can see a compensation of tachycardia because of it. Uh, we postural syncope again you're causing vasodilation which means that we could possibly see these you know hypoperfusion type of states with postural postural syncope and so on and so forth and a few other ones as well that could possibly happen but those are the big ones we got to watch out for uh, one thing here that we want to be careful with is administration in a right ventricular infarct it can result in hypotension this isn't just a precaution this is a very detrimental thing that can happen when you use nitro in a right ventricular infarct so be very cautious and when you're using nitro and confirming that there is no right ventricular infarct and we talk about that in our inferior infarct video in regards to nitro and why that's so dangerous again we'll tag that at the end of this video so you can check that one out as well okay so that's a little, so that's a little bit about nitroglycerin and how it kind of works within the body and what we're using it for hopefully this is helpful for you guys if you have any questions feel free to reach out put it in the comments down below we'd love to chat and help you out if you love these types of videos if this is the kind of learning that really helps you as an EMT or paramedic student then we would love for you to become a master medics member you can become a member right now and get access to these types of videos as well as our live classes we do with our team three to four times a week. And if uh, if you join on that three day trial, you can check out those live classes and all our videos as well. If you love it, you stay as long as you like. If you don't like them, you cancel and there's no risk to you whatsoever, no money out of your bank account. That is our promise to you. So if you would like to do that, we put the link in the description down below, test it out. I would love to, you to take us up on that offer and we'll see you on the inside.